back again. And this one is a request from Double Warrior 66. He wants to know how to get a prefab, like, you know, a Covenant cruiser to move from point A to point B. And I actually got a request for something like this a long, long time ago, and I didn't think I could do it because the way that scripts work with uh, moving objects and their notes, because one object would have to complete moving entirely with its timer before another object would start moving, even if you use the for each object node. But I have discovered custom event global async. That allows this to happen. So uh, a couple things before we start is, yes, this is only for it to go in a straight line. Straight line only, because rotating everything, and especially considering uh, how you would have to rotate them, is really, really, really advanced, and that's, it's more of a math thing rather than a scripting thing. But other than that, though, I can show you exactly how to do it in less than 20 nodes for sure. So let's jump right into it. I have two prefabs here, as you can see, and this one is the important one. It's the one we're going to move, and this one is for an example to show you what you can't do with it. So... The thing you want to make sure of is that all of the objects in your prefab are dynamic objects. Otherwise, this is not going to work the way you want. So with that, I can bring that and, of course, my trigger. Yours will be different, but I have a button into our uh, script brain with Y. So go ahead and pull those in. I'm going to put my prefab up here and put the button over here because the way the script is going to turn out looking. So the first object or uh, first node I'm going to need is an events custom, and it's going to be on object interacted due to the fact that it is a button. There we go. So here's the part you'll need. So let's go to logic and grab for each object. Go ahead and plug that into our event just like this. And there we go. Uh, we need a way to get our prefab into this. And you would think it's a prefab, so it is a group of objects already. However, we cannot plug it in there because it is treated as a singular object. But we do have a node to separate those back into multiple different objects and that is in objects category and it's going to be get objects in prefab place it here plug your prefab into that and then get objects in prefab into for each object just like that so we only need one more node for this part of the script and it's going to be a custom event and it's going to be the very bottom trigger custom event global async uh, plug in execute per object into this diamond right here and then the current object needs to be plugged into the object of this. The identifier needs to be something simple that you'll remember and what it does. And mine is just move prefab. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure that it does match later. Okay, the reason why we need a custom event global async, specifically the async, is because whenever you try to move an object with the object's transforms nodes, um, they will finish each individual object before moving on in the script to the next object that needs to be moved. It will finish the timer that you have set translating this object before it will move on. And this, when we do it like this, we allow the script to make them all run simultaneously, which normally you would not be able to do. So let's go ahead and grab on custom event global async and name it the same thing. Move prefab. And let's grab, let's see here, from object transform. There we go get object position and plug that into our object output of our custom event because what you'll see is we're simply adding an adapter we're doing this right here basically but we're doing it from here through here like this that's exactly what we're doing that's why we plug that into the object input of the custom event so now that we've got the uh, position of one of the objects which will then be each object in the prefab we're going to need to uh, change its position. And all we need to do to do that is go to math and go to add vectors because adding the vectors is just adding a position or adding a number to the position that we get from this. And we can't just uh, select it and change it like this. We have to add it by a specific uh, axis. So the X, Y, or Z axis. So to do that, let's go to variables basic and grab a vector three variable. This just gives us a blank x, y, z variable or a location out here. And then it's going. we're going to go ahead and make sure everything is zero like this. So basically it's adding zero. And what happens when you add zero? The number stays the same. So the position would stay the same. But let's make it move. And I'm going to make it move on the y axis. So I'm going to make it move 20 on the y axis. So that will go from here to somewhere like right about uh, here, somewhere along that line. 
And if I was to give it a negative value, it would go back this way instead. So anyway, now that we have this, let's go ahead and make it move. So we need to change, uh, we need to plug our result into something and that is also in objects transform. Translate object to point, that's what we want. So go ahead and grab it and connect your uh, custom event directly to that. The object, plus it, place it here because it's just like doing this, as I explained earlier. The position, the new position that it's going to move to will be this position plus 20 units, which is about right here. So now we need to make this move in a regular amount of time, I guess. I'm going to set it to four seconds. And then the movement curve, whatever you want, I'm going to set it to linear. And we're done. That's it. That is the entire script. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and start it and uh, give, you, give you a look at it. Yeah, you see that the whole entire prefab is moving in uniform. And you can do it again. And again, as long as you have the triggers for it, it will keep adding 20 to the current position it already has. You'll notice that I have this other prefab over here. I've ungrouped it. So let me go ahead and group this back in. What I did was make this a static object. It is not dynamic. So go ahead and uh, put this back into a prefab. And now we're going to bring this prefab into our node graph. You'll see that it says prefab1 instead and it has a non-dynamic object in it. And the one thing you're going to notice when we activate this, only the dynamic objects are affected by this. So we technically did get a static object into the node graph. However, unfortunately, nothing in the node graph can affect them. So that is why it stayed while everything else was able to move. And that should just about do it. It wasn't a very long script, which is great, but keep in mind that it only works in a straight line using this method, and it doesn't involve dynamic objects. So unfortunately, if you have a really nice covenant ship you've built, if it doesn't have only dynamic objects, it's not all going to move this way. But that should do it. In the next coming days, there's going to be apparently an ice storm, snowstorm, something like that coming through my area. So I may not be able to work on videos or check anything for a few days, but no big deal. I'll be back after that, though. So I'll see you guys on the next one.